On this episode of What's Going On With Shipping, we're going to venture into a new field. We're going to talk about something that is crosses between the commercial side and the military side, and that is autonomous vessels, specifically the ghost fleet. Hi, my name is Sal Mercaglano. I'm an associate professor of history at Campbell University, a former merchant mariner, and an adjunct instructor in maritime industry policy. I should also mention the fact that uh, I am have a PhD in military and naval history, hence this topic today. So I did a quick Google search for ghost fleet, and this is what came up. Uh, when you type in ghost fleet, and I just pull up the images here, you get a couple of things. Number one, a, a book by Peter Singer and August Cole, which is a great book, which kind of talks about the future of naval combat, and it talks about the next world war between the United States and China, and it focuses on vessels, and particularly what he calls the ghost fleet. The other image you have here, which is showing up here, is some of the reserve fl fleet, the vessels that are housed in anchorages around the United States, which are slowly, by the way, being decreased. There's almost none left in these reserve anchorages anymore. Uh, there was once eight of them. They were down to three, and, and most of them are actually being phased out. What's left is a few vessels uh, in, in the James River in Virginia, in Beaumont, Texas, and the Susan Bay in California is being removed entirely. And then you get some other images here, but it's a very interesting uh, uh, kind of uh, uh, selection that came up. What prompted this video today was a story here in G Captain. The Navy's second ghost fleet unmanned ship makes long range transit from the Gulf to the West Coast. I'm going to blow up these vessels for you. These are two vessels in what is called the ghost fleet. Uh, these are autonomous vessels being designed and, and converted by the U.S. Navy. Now, these are former offshore vessels, uh, a fast ferry, uh, the vessel in the back there, Nomad. Uh, she's basically a, a, a fast ferry to bring uh, people out. She was designed to bring uh, personnel out to uh, oil platforms and offshore facilities. And then Ranger right here which is basically designed to basically haul cargo out to those facilities. Uh, the story, as it goes right here, talks about this transit. Uh, Nomad, which basically joined uh, Ranger, uh, completed their part of the Ghost Fleet Overlord program. Uh, and Nomad right here, a unmanned surface vessel, traveled a total of 4,421 nautical miles, 98% of which was in autonomous mode. The first Goat Fleet uh, Overlord vessel, uh, Ranger, completed a similar transit in October of 2020. Both vessels passed through the Panama Canal while in manual mode. I also should note, I'm not 100% sure these vessels did not have crew on board. They say in autonomous mode. It doesn't mean they were unmanned. And one of the big programs the U.S. Navy is trying to do is develop these unmanned platforms. Came out just this year uh, with a, an entire kind of campaign framework to talk about this, this entire brochure here basically deals with that, talks about it. And I'm gonna get over here to a section that I wanna show you, which talks about their vessels in some detail. So this is in the booklet here, and it shows you the type of vessels they're, they're experimenting on. These large unmanned surface vessels, LUSVs, that military cannot help but have acronyms. It just can't. Uh, and so these are going to be the end result. One of the things they're really looking at for these deep water, long range vessels where they can put what they call vertical launch systems on them basically weapons, and they can basically marry them up, kind of link them together with sur surface combatants. Right now, you're in the Overlord prototype. That's what they're talking about right here, the experimental unmanned surface craft with long range and endurance and configurable payloads capacity as a precursor to the LUSV. So basically, these vessels, these two right here that we're, we're talking about right here are not going to be the end state. They're kind of just test platforms right now. And then they have these other elements right here. They have the Sea Hunter program, which demonstrates this long range and endurance autonomous operations of a medium unmanned surface vessel. The Navy has several of these right here. I think I have them here. Yep, this is them right here. This is what they call their Sea Hunter uh, program right here. Very small little vessels uh, designed really for sensors more than anything else is, is what they're looking at. And they'll eventually be upgraded. So, so why am I talking about this today? Why is this? Well, be, beyond it being a story here in G Captain, which I think is very interesting that we're, we're talking about it, it's been covered extensively in another uh, news source. This is the USNI, the United States Naval Institute News. They talk about this. 
program quite extensively. The Navy is looking into it. They've been talking about it. this is actually the, the, the ghost ship, this nomad coming through uh, the Panama Canal. Uh, both nomad and ranger right now are right here in Port Wainimi, which is on the west coast of the United States. Uh, uh, nomad is, is, is formerly the Riley Clare. You'll see it right there, a crew boat. And then the Ranger right there, high-speed craft. They're both out here in Port Wainimi. Port Wainimi is, is just north of Los Angeles, Long Beach. Uh, it is a site there that the military operates, used to be there. Uh, they still operate uh, construction battalions and CBs out of there. But some of their special operations and <clears throat> research is, is being done in this area. And the reason I'm talking about this is because Autonomous and automated vessels are big, not just in the military side, but also in the commercial side. The example of that is right here. This is a story in Maritime Executive. SpaceX may have the largest unmanned merchant, um, merchant vessel in operation. Old Elon Musk right here has this out right here, the Autonomous SpaceX drone ship, a shortfall of Gravitas. I believe I have that video here for you. Let's go ahead and zoom in here and let's go ahead and just play this video. This is the vessel right here. She is completely autonomous. There's no crew on board. She's a barge. She's used to capture the SpaceX vessels, uh, rocket ships when they return back to Earth. And I, I even quoted a tweet the other day uh, where I talked about this, about you know, marrying up SpaceX and the Navy for this. But one of the things I think that's misconceived is, is the difference between these two. This vessel is entirely autonomous. There's no personnel on it. Heads out from, from shore, heads out to an anchorage to land vessels uh, on it, to land these space rockets that have ejected their cargo into space on board, and, and they come back in. Uh, but there's a reason for that, and, 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 and it's a pretty good reason. This is a video here of, uh, of, uh, of uh, SpaceX launches over time. And uh, a, a few of these you'll see are, 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 are not exactly, how should I say this, picture perfect in some way. So these, these are practices on, on water landings that they did. Uh, then you have some other launch issues here. But more importantly, some of the landings on the barges are not exactly, again, picture perfect. And so when they were doing the landings back on the barges, they realized that having a crew on board could be dangerous. And so it was much better to have an autonomous vessel. Here you see some of these landings on the barges right here and, and, and where some of them did not go exactly right. So probably not a good idea to have crew on board uh, during this uh, for fear that something could happen to them. Uh, again, uh, the envisionment is these rockets are going to get bigger and larger, but these barges would be good enough to get them. Now, again, autonomous means it's not fully automatic. You don't just turn it on and send it out. There's usually chase boats after there with them. Uh, there's still control of the vessel. Uh, it's not completely you know, automated and sent out. You have to have control over the vessels. And that's the big debate going on between the US military and the commercial uh, aspect on whether or not you can basically send vessels out completely undetached. Uh, the communication uplink is really the big issue. Uh, I want to show you another video, which I found very interesting. This came out a few years ago from Rolls-Royce. Uh, Rolls-Royce, who makes a, a lot of uh, marine engines, put out this video right here. I'm going to go ahead and play this for a second. Uh, this is a uh, concept here by Rolls-Royce. We live in an ever-changing world. One second, make sure my audio is working perfectly for you because I always want to make sure world we're unmanned and don't want it to come out wrong. Controlled vessels are becoming reality. Let us share a view of this world with you. So, this is a prediction of the future uh, by Rolls Royce where they would have these. The control room is the nerve center of remote operations in the Rolls Royce OX concept where the global wall shows a real-time overview the world, of worldwide shipping traffic. A, coming in from a full situation a overview A vessel coming in from South America into the Gulf of Finland. From their onshore workstations. And you'd be able to completely monitor, check vessels, and be able to operate them with no crew at all on board. Connection for vessel RR9835. 
okay, I hate the idea that they're naming vessels like that. It's just, it's terrible. At least give it a ship name. Suggested course of action. Diagnostics. Commands. Proceed. So the idea is you can operate everything from the ship right here from, from a nice control room and everything. And you can even status. launch drones Nominal. to monitor INS the vessel status. and determine what is wrong. Stopped. Let me mute this for you. And determine what's wrong with the vessel. Now, I think this is a great futuristic look of what's going to happen with shipping. I, I can see some of this happening without a doubt. We already link a lot of engine rooms back to systems uh, by the manufacturer to run diagnostics to get performance data so that the engines can run more efficiently to determine long range issues with the engines. But the concept of having no crew on board a commercial vessel, I have to tell you, I don't think it's going to be a, a, a starter in many ways, not the least of which is because I don't think you'd be able to insure these vessels. Once these vessels leave shore, they have no crew on board, uh, those vessels could just disappear. There's no telling what could happen. But I think elements of automation are coming in. We've seen that time and time again. Crews of vessels are getting smaller and smaller. Ever given the largest, you know, one of these huge, massive, ultra large container ships, 1300 feet, it has a crew of 25 on board. You know, you go back 50 years and a ship a third of the size would have twice the crew on board. It's all a matter of data and how you control that data. Let's go ahead and pause that for a minute. I think it's a real, like I said, it's a really interesting uh, concept here in how the vessel operates. And it comes back to this story right here on G Captain with the US Navy experimenting with these autonomous vessels. The question is, do you want to have warships out there with no crew on board. I think we're going to see smaller and smaller crew, but as, as a mariner and someone who's sailed for a living and, and investigated history throughout time, understand things go wrong on vessels because of the nature of vessels, because of the nature of operating in blue water, salt water, things are going to go wrong. Things are going to pop loose. There's going to be leaks. There's going, there's going to be problems. And autonomous vessels are great in the short term, but they're not a long term, I think, evolution. Uh, it'd be you'd probably still need minimal amount of crew on board. And I think we see that both in the military and the commercial side. So as we start talking about this idea of ghost fleets, of sending vessels out onto the high seas and sending them out, you know, with no crew on board, that sounds great. I mean, we, we've we've created so many other things in our society without personnel on board. But again, the risks are great for losses, uh, for issues with what happens to the vessels. All you need to do is watch a season of Deadliest Catch and realize that one boat's always going to have an issue that could basically sink it if there wasn't personnel on board to catch it and repair it. And I think that's a, a big issue. I think it's very interesting that the Navy's doing this. I think autonomous vessels, you know, sensors and, and use of them are going to have their place. If you go a little further in this thing, uh, they, they talk not just about surface vessels, but they're talking about airborne drones. They're talking about subsurface, uh, talking about different versions on ground and, and, you know, basically marrying mine countermeasures. Good idea. You know, don't sail out into a minefield. Uh, with them, unmanned surface vessels to surround your surface vessel to investigate, you know, vessels coming close to you, always a good idea. Uh, I, I think we'll see, you know, this, this network eventually developed around that. Uh, but right now, this is, is particularly interesting, this, this development. I will also note one other thing, and, and I'm going to comment on this, is the offshore vessel industry has undergone a huge downturn in the United States. Because of shale oil development, because of drilling uh, with fracking, the offshore oil platform business basically dried up. And a lot of operators of offshore vessels were trying to divest themselves of their fleet, and they either sold them overseas or scrapped them. The U.S. Navy missed a golden opportunity to purchase dozens of these vessels uh, for development and operations. Uh, and, and I think vessels like this could be very useful in the future, especially with, with some autonomy, some, some mechanization, some automation that minimizes the amount of, of crew necessary on board, you know, unmanned engine rooms are, are common across the commercial fleet. Uh, you don't really see that too much in, uh, the military, especially in the U S Navy. 
uh, today. Uh, you can put a lot of different sensors and platforms, drones, you name it, both both flying and 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 surface and subsurface on them. I think this is the development uh, that's going to be watched, and I think there's going to be a lot of talk about it. I think the the military and the commercial can learn a lot from each other in this. The fact that SpaceX has this type of automated vessel, even though it's a barge just to catch a vessel, is 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 fairly interesting. Uh, again, you can turn something like this into a drone carrier. Yeah, there's, there's a lot of potential out there. And for operations in and around harbors, for dangerous cargoes, you'll see this happen more and more. So anyway, just an interesting story I thought I'd top uh, break into, a little bit something different here on the channel, something we have not talked about. And, and again, Ghost Fleet is, uh, is an interesting topic. So I hope you enjoy this, uh, a little diversion from our normal what's going on with shipping. Uh, if you enjoyed it, Go ahead, hit subscribe, hit the bell so you'll be alerted about new stories as they come out. Uh, we'll be doing some more features as we go on here. Also, be sure to give it a thumbs up so that it hits that algorithm in YouTube and it can be shared across all platforms. And feel free to share it across your social media. Until next time, this is Sal signing off.